Welcome to the KJ and Company Christmas Kitchen. We are festive today and we are making a chocolate espresso bundt cake that is perfect for the holiday season. If you love chocolate and if you love coffee, this bundt cake is for you. Each slice is decadent and then the frosting that's poured over the top. Mm, I can't wait, let's get started. Okay, so we have a cup of freshly brewed coffee. We wanna make sure it's hot and that is because we're gonna add cocoa powder to it. And adding the cocoa powder to the hot coffee will activate this cocoa powder and make it even more rich and indulgent, which is gonna be perfect in this cake. So you just pour it on in. <laughs> Try not to get suffocated by cocoa powder. And you just use a fork or a whisk and you whisk it together until it's nice and combined. It smells amazing. Chocolate and coffee are meant to be together, in my opinion. They are the perfect pair. Okay, and you just mix it together until it forms just a nice chocolatey liquid. <laughs> okay, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna get started on the base of the cake. So we're gonna start with a couple eggs. Crack them on into your bowl. Try not to get any shells in there. So, a habit of mine that my husband really hates is I usually put <laughs> I put the used eggshells back into the carton instead of throwing them away. <laughs> Drives them up the wall. But I got a little piece in there. Yeah, come on, little buddy. Okay. Then we have a cup of heavy cream. Pour it on in. And then we're gonna measure out half a cup of vegetable oil or a very light colored oil. You could use like an avocado oil. Okay. Just gonna keep it nice and moist. Okay. Whisk it together. All right, we're gonna add in a splash of vanilla. I eyeball it. Can you ever go wrong with too much vanilla? It's like garlic, you can't have enough. Okay, and then this, <laughs> this cocoa and coffee mixture that we whipped together earlier, it's still a little bit warm, but it's not too warm where it's gonna affect the eggs. So we're just gonna pour that on in. Look at all that chocolatey goodness. Get all of that in there as you, much as you can. You want every last drop. Okay. And then we whisk it together and then you really see that chocolate cake batter start to come together. I mean, just give me a spoon right now and I'll eat it. Maybe not yet, let's add some flour first. Okay, now to the dry ingredients. Okay, here's a little life hack when you're measuring flour. You always wanna make sure that all the nooks and crannies of the measuring cup are filled. So I fill it, I overflow it, and then I tap it. I tap it on in, and that'll just allow the flour to settle into the measuring cup. And then you scrape off the excess. And then you make sure you have a full cup of flour. Right on in. And one more cup. Okay. And then we have baking soda and baking powder in this recipe. And that'll help get a nice fluffy cake. Two teaspoons baking powder. I love this cake because everything comes together in one bowl and you just need a whisk to bring it all together. And that's it. And then we have the, the baking soda. <laughs> Promptly on time. One teaspoon baking soda. Okay. Okay, and then a teaspoon of salt right on in. And now we gotta sweeten it up so we're gonna add in some sugar. So it's two cups of sugar. That 
looked like a lot. It was a half cup measuring, I promise. I didn't just put four cups of sugar in that. <laughs> and we're gonna whisk this until smooth and just work out all of those lumps from the flour. Nobody wants a lumpy cake batter, so make sure to get all of those worked out. Okay, this, this is what we want. Look at that. Now we go to the bun pan. Just gonna eat it. <laughs> we have our bun pan and we want to really grease this baby because nothing's worse, nothing is worse when you try to turn out your bun pan, your bun cake and half of it sticks. So make sure to get all the nook and crannies of your bunt pan sprayed down. She ain't sticking this time. Okay, please work. Now we're gonna pour the batter into the bunt pan. Just evenly distribute it all around. Perfect, look at that. Never seen anything so beautiful. Get all of that goodness in there. This is gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes until a toothpick inserted into the middle comes out clean. And then we'll turn it out and hope it worked. <laughs> to the oven. <laughs> okay, so our bunt cake is fresh out of the oven. It sat just a couple minutes to let it rest and now we're gonna turn it out onto a cooling rack to allow it to cool completely. This is what you say a prayer that it all comes out in one piece. Okay, the easiest way to do it is to take your cooling rack, place it over the top, bring it to the side, and just flip her on over. And I heard it, I heard it, and I felt it. I think we're gonna be okay. I can get my Brand spanking new butt pan is the way to do it. Look at how glossy and beautiful it is. It makes me cry. Okay, one second. Here's a prime example. Here's a prime example. Use a hot pad. This is a brand new butt pan. Look at how glossy it is. This is an old butt pan. <laughs> and the cake stuck and you can see how beat up it is. New bunt pans are worth it. Every penny. Okay. <sighs> we can go home now. Our work here is done. Now we're gonna make an espresso cream cheese frosting for the bunt cake. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with some cream cheese. And to that, we're gonna add our powdered sugar. This is gonna sweeten it up. I'm just gonna start with one, about one cup. Roughly one cup. I'm not measuring. And then to that, we're gonna add some instant espresso powder. You don't wanna use espresso granules as those will be gritty. We wanna make sure we have instant espresso powder. So you're just gonna pour that right on in. Pure caffeine. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my mixer and we're gonna blend this up a little bit, add in some more powdered sugar, and then we're gonna drizzle in some heavy cream to make a nice, smooth, frothy frosting. I feel like this one's so quiet. More powdered sugar.
Okay, so now we're gonna add in some heavy cream, and that's usually not an ingredient you see in a frosting, but we want this frosting to be pourable so we can pour it all over that delicious chocolate bundt cake we just made. So I'm gonna pour in some whipped cream, or heavy whipping cream, roughly a cup, and kind of play it by ear just so that the frosting is pourable enough. That's the consistency we're going for. Oh, and we gotta add in some vanilla. Can't, can't miss out on the vanilla. Okay, I'm just gonna very gently blend this together because we don't wanna over whip it because that will make the whipped cream actually whip and get super fluffy, which wouldn't be bad, but then we wouldn't be able to pour it. Okay, so one of the easiest ways to test that if it's gonna be pourable enough is to grab a spoon and see if you can pour it. That's a little bit too thick for me, so I'm just gonna gently actually just fold in some more heavy cream instead of beating it. So this is where you kind of play it by ear. You certainly could just spoon and spread this all over the bundt cake, but I want to be able to get that nice cascading drizzle of frosting going down the sides. So we're just gonna gently stir this in. We're almost there. All right, I can feel it. This is going to be good. I feel like this will give us a good drizzle down. You can see how nice and loose it is. There we go. You can see it wants to, it wants to cascade. Okay, now we get to frost the cake. All right, we have our cooled bundt cake here, and I think the easiest way to pour the frosting all over the cake is to use a gravy boat. So I'm just gonna transfer this frosting that we made, some of it into the gravy boat, and then we'll get those perfect cascades all over the cake. If you stay on top on the top ridge, it'll kind of just naturally fall on the sides. Here she is in all of her beauty, the chocolate espresso bundt cake that is perfect for the holiday table. How gorgeous would that be? Setting that as a centerpiece and everybody would want to dig in right away because I want to dig in right away. This cake is so good and worth every bite. Merry Christmas! Hi. Why, like, how have we not developed a better way to buy flour. Like, why are they in these bags? I should have opened all these before. <laughs> this is real life. This is what the kitchen looks like, guys. Where's the salt? And you don't want to use espresso. You do not want to use espresso. You do not. Okay. You can't wait to dig in because it's my favorite. I'm gonna get the perfect bite here. Mmm, it's so good. We're just gonna eat it. We're gonna eat it all. We're gonna just keep eating this.